So today we're diving into a topic that people don't really love talking about, but honestly, we should. It's super common, often misunderstood, and comes with a lot of unnecessary stigma. Yup, we're talking about herpes, both oral and genital. Now before you get uncomfortable or click away, just know this. Millions of people have herpes and most of them don't even know it. So whether you're here as a student, someone who's concerned about their symptoms, or just curious to learn more, this video is going to give you all the facts in a clear and simple way. We'll go over what herpes is, the difference between oral and genital herpes, what causes it, the symptoms you should watch out for, how it's diagnosed, what treatment options are available, and how to live a normal life with it. And as always, I'll drop some helpful exam tips and mnemonics at the end for the med students out there. All right, let's get into it. So first up, what exactly is herpes? Herpes is a viral infection caused by the herpes simplex virus, or HSV. There are two main types, HSV1 and HSV2. Now, here's the thing. Both types can cause both oral and genital herpes, but typically, HSV1 causes oral herpes. That's cold sores or fever blisters around the mouth. HSV2 is more often linked to genital herpes, so sores or lesions in the genital or anal area. That said, HSV1 can be transmitted to the genitals through oral sex, so you might see oral herpes strains down there too. The virus is super contagious and spreads through direct skin-to-skin -skin contact, like kissing, oral sex, vaginal sex, or anal sex. And get this, you can catch herpes even when no sores are visible. That's because the virus can still shed from the skin without any symptoms, what we call asymptomatic viral shedding. Now once you catch herpes, it stays in your body, like for life. The virus travels along your nerves and hides out in a ganglion, a kind of nerve cluster where it goes dormant. Then every so often it can reactivate and cause a flare-up or outbreak. All right, let's talk about the symptoms. So here's the tricky part. Many people have herpes and never show symptoms, or they get symptoms so mild they don't even notice. But when symptoms do show up, especially during the first outbreak, they can be pretty intense. For oral herpes, you'll often see painful blisters or ulcers around the lips or inside the mouth, burning, tingling, or itching before the blisters show up. We call that a prodrome. Fever, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat. Especially in the first episode. For genital herpes, symptoms can include painful blisters or sores on or around the genitals, buttocks or thighs, pain or burning while peeing, especially if the sores are near the urethra, vaginal or urethral discharge, flu-like symptoms, fever, headache, body aches. And here's something to keep in mind. The first outbreak is usually the worst. It can last two to four weeks. After that, the virus goes dormant and later outbreaks, if they happen, tend to be milder and shorter. Also things like stress, illness, hormonal changes, sunlight, for oral herpes, or even vigorous activity can trigger a recurrence. Now, just a quick pause. Yana, if you're finding this helpful so far, don't just like the video and share it. Yeah, seriously, just hit that share button and send it to a friend, or even drop it in a WhatsApp group. You'd be surprised how many people need this info and are too nervous to ask. All right, back to it. So how is herpes diagnosed? Well, doctors usually start with a physical exam. If you have visible sores, they might be enough to suggest herpes. But to confirm it, they can do a viral culture or a PCR test, where they swab a sore and look for HSV DNA in a lab. PCR is more accurate and widely used today. If you don't have active sores but still suspect you have herpes, like maybe a partner tested positive or you had a weird symptom weeks ago, doctors can do a blood test to look for antibodies to HSV1 or HSV2. But just know, these blood tests can't tell you where the infection is, only that you've been exposed at some point. All right, so what about treatment? So here's the thing, there's no cure for herpes, but the good news is it's totally manageable. And for many people, it's just a minor inconvenience once they know how to deal with it. The main treatments are antiviral medications like acyclovir, valacyclovir, famcyclovir. These meds work by stopping the virus from multiplying. They don't remove the virus from your body, but they can. Shorten the duration of an outbreak. Reduce the severity of symptoms. Lower the chance of passing it to others. There are two main ways these drugs are used. Episodic therapy. You take the meds only when you feel an outbreak coming on. Suppressive therapy. You take a low dose every day to prevent outbreaks and reduce transmission risk, especially if you have frequent recurrences or you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't have herpes. Oh, and if you're dealing with pain during an outbreak. Things like cool compresses, over-the-counter pain meds, or even just wearing loose clothing can help ease discomfort. One important note, using condoms or dental dams reduces the risk of transmission, but doesn't eliminate it entirely. Why? Because herpes can be spread through skin that isn't covered by a condom. 
And just to clear this up, you can live a totally normal life with herpes. People date, get married, have kids, and live happy, healthy lives. It doesn't define you. All right, let's wrap up with a few exam tips and mnemonics for the students tuning in. So here's a classic mnemonic. To remember the symptoms of primary genital herpes, fire P, F for fever, I for inguinal lymphadenopathy, swollen groin nodes, R for recurrence risk, E for erosions or painful ulcers, P for painful urination. Also, remember this, HSV1 is more oral but can be genital. HSV2 is usually gentle and more likely to recur. Both can be asymptomatic, that's key. First episode is worst. PCR is the gold standard for diagnosis when sores are present. And for treatment, remember, AVF, A for acyclovir, V for valacyclovir, F for famcyclovir. Also, for your OSCEs or clinical exams, if a patient presents with multiple painful genital ulcers and systemic symptoms like fever, and especially if it's the first episode, always think herpes. All right, final thoughts. Herpes is super common, like one in six adults common, and the sooner we start talking about it without judgment or stigma, the sooner people can get help, protect their partners, and feel less alone. So whether you're learning this for school, for your health, or just out of curiosity, thanks for sticking around. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and go ahead and share it on WhatsApp or with someone who might need to hear this. You never know who you'll help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.